Hey there, Ben Lipper here. So recently I've been getting a whole bunch of questions about how do you code a flywheel in a way that makes it suit into the goal consistently. You know, oftentimes you'll have your flywheel, it's like spinning, it's good to go, it looks like, and you shoot the ball and it'll go in and the next ball like go way too far and the next one like won't go far enough. And you're like trying to figure out, you know, why is that? And a lot of times, not always, but often the reason is encoding. So I figured I'd kind of show you how I've coded my flywheel so that that doesn't happen. So let's go ahead and check it out. So I've got this flywheel mechanism here. You can see it, you know, it's not attached to a robot right now. It could be. Um, the coding principles are the same whether it's attached or not. But I just want to show you how to do something called velocity control and velocity monitoring on it. So basically we're going to kind of tackle both of those guys and make this flywheel work. So if you're looking at this right now and you're like, yes, that's what I need, there's a link to this video. Go and click it. Um, it's going to send you an email so that once this you know, you're done watching this video, you'll actually have all of my notes for making this. You'll have a, like a screenshot of the code just in case the video wasn't quite high enough resolution. And I'll have instructions for kind of how to set it up and how to adjust it so that it works perfectly with your robot. So if you're going to follow along, go ahead and click the link below. You'll need that when you're done with this video to tune it and get it ready to go. But let's get started. Let's jump into VexCode. All right, so here we are in VexCode VR. We are interested in getting our project set up. So, uh, of course, you'd save your project. Once you've done that, though, you're going to add some devices. I like to start with the controller. That's just an easy one. Boom, I got it right. Now, I'm going to go into here and add my motor group. So, I'm going to add motor 7 and 12. That is going to be my flywheel. There we go. That'll be my shooter, flywheel, whatever you want to call it. I can tell you probably one of your flywheel motors is going to be reversed. The other will not. Not sure which is which, so I'm just going to pick one and you know, go with that. All right. And we're going to add one more thing. If you remember, I have this touch LED right here in my design. And the reason for that is it's going to tell me when I'm at the correct speed to shoot. You know, oftentimes people will keep shooting their balls at different speeds because the flywheel is not, they don't know how fast the flywheel is going. It looks like it's going the right speed, but you don't have the precise monitoring. And so the flywheel will be at different speeds and you're shooting and like, it's just not working because it, as you're shooting at different speeds, the ball is going different distances. So that's a problem a whole bunch of people have been running into this year. So I'm going to add a touch LED and that should fix that. So I'm going to hit nine. That seems like a good port and done. So let's get started. We are going to start with a when started block. And under there, we're just going to kind of set some parameters. So I'm going to first set my flywheel stopping mode to coast. There we are. So that the reason we do this is to save our flywheel motors the reason that they burn out if it's not set to coast is relatively complex basically the motors fight themselves when they're trying to spin down if it's not set to coast so i like to set mine to coast and that works really well the other thing we want to do is set our flywheel velocity now this is kind of key the handout underneath the video you know click the link you get the details on like how to tune this but one of the things we cover is how to set this number so i'm going to set it to 70 because I went through the handout and I know what that's supposed to be. But um, you're going to have to figure out what that number is. It's probably not going to be 70 for you, but it might be somewhere close. Awesome. Uh, additionally, the really important thing you do is you have to make sure this does not say percent. It needs to say RPM. If it's percent, it's open loop. If it's RPM, it's closed loop. And we need closed loop. So we're going to set it to RPM. And then another block. So what I like to do is then grab one of these guys. One controller button. Ooh, what do I want? I want my flywheel to be on L up and L down. So I'm going to do when L up is pressed. What do I want it to do? I want it to spin my flywheel motor. What direction? How about forward? Cool. So my flywheel is spinning forward. Life is good. It's spinning forward at 70 RPM. So now I've got my closed loop. I need the feedback though. So let's go ahead and get that. What this looks like is a repeat until loop. So we're going to say we want to monitor the speed of this until we turn off the flywheel. What turns off the flywheel? If L up is going to turn it on, I'm going to make L down turn it off. And of course, you can customize these to be whatever buttons you want. This guy's your turn on button. This guy's your turn off button. Awesome. But I'm going to repeat that until that's done. And then when that happens, of course, I'll be stopping my flywheel. Great. Got some flywheel control. So if I download this to the brain right now, it would spin my flywheel at a constant RPM. But there's a few other things that I want to do. I am interested in, while the flywheel is running, and only while the flywheel is running, I need to know if it's at the correct speed. So in order to do that, I will use an if-else statement. All right, so I'm going to check to see if it's spinning the right speed. 
Uh, if it is spinning the right speeds, so if, we'll fill in what the condition is here in a minute, but if it's spinning the right speed, I'm going to set my LED to green. And if it's not, I'm going to set my LED to red. Red, red, red. There you go. And then when I stop the flywheel, you know, I want it to not be green or red, so I'll just set it to blue. That seems like a good idea. And then, of course, I'll add this up here. That way, when I start the program, it'll start blue, and then it's going to remain blue for the uh, as long as the flywheel's off. And then whenever I turn it on, it'll switch between red and green to tell me if it's at velocity. How do you check to see if your flywheel's at velocity? This is relatively complicated coding, so I'm going to go through it slowly. So here is how you tell how fast your flywheel is going. Flywheel velocity in, not percent, but RPM. We're always using RPM here. And now, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract that. Use a minus sign, right? Subtract that guy from our target. So we want it to be going 70, so I'll type 70 in there. There we go. So this is going to tell us how far away from our target we are. The only problem is it can be positive or negative. So if we're at 75 right now, it'll be positive. You know, our flywheel is going faster than it should be. We'll have a positive error, it's called. So that this guy will return a positive number. But if we are not going fast enough, maybe we're still spinning out. We're only at 40 RPM. This will be negative. And we need to account for both sides of that. The way you do that is something called an absolute value. Abs, right there. So we're going to put this in our side of our abs, our absolute value. And that's, uh, if you're not familiar with absolute value, it only makes, it makes numbers positive. So if you put a neg, you say, what's the absolute value of negative five? It's going to say positive five. It's just like that. It's not that complicated. This is just going to tell us how close to our speed we are. So basically say that we are five off. We could be 75, that would be five off too fast, or we could be 65 and five off too slow. And either way, this thing's going to spit out five. It'll tell you you're off by five. It won't tell you what direction though. And that's what we want because we want to say, are we off by less than, I lost it. There we are. Are we off by less than a certain number? And what number should we put here? Um, again, there, de there are details on this in the handout. So like underneath this video, click the link, enter your email address. I'll send you all of this stuff. But um, I'm going to try a number of 10 here. There we are. All right, I'll throw that guy in there, and that should be good. Now we are ready to download. So go ahead and plug in your brain. You'll get this little green, green brain icon up here. Hit that download button, and we should be good to go. Let's give it a try. All right, so now we're ready to give this a try. So I've got my whole thing set up here. Um, this LED currently is blue. I know it doesn't quite look like it on the camera. That's okay. Just take my word for it. It's blue. So I'm going to turn it on. It's going to turn red. The flywheels are spinning up right now. You can see them spinning right here. And just turn green, indicating to me those flywheels are at speed. You can see, though, if I were to grab one of these flywheels, like I just shot a ball, it turns red for a moment as it spins up again to its correct speed, and then it turns green again. So how do you actually use this on your robot? So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to make the code, you're going to download it to your robot. And then use the handout, and it's going to explain to you how to set some numbers. There's two numbers you got to set, the flywheel velocity, and you have to set your um, tolerance. And so I'll show you how to set both of those guys. should be super easy, but, you know, you, you do got to set it. And then what we're going to do is we'll just give it a try, and you'll start driving it. So I hope that was helpful. Like I said before, link out of this video will get you the handout so you can tune this. It's called, um, you know, get all those numbers correct. Other than that... Thank you so much for watching. As always, like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing what you build.